Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Calhoun, what is it that, that you get paid currently? Senator, that's uh, well disclosed in, in our proxy documents uh, in each of the years that I've been employed. Yeah, but what is it? It's a big number, sir. Well, let me help you out. It's $32.8 million this year. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. That's a 45% increase over last year. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. What is it you get paid to do exactly? I get paid to run the Boeing company. Yeah. So just help me understand that. I mean, do you get paid for transparency? Is that, is that part of, is that one of the metrics for your income? I think the board counts on me for transparency. Really? Because you're under investigation for falsifying 787 inspection records. The Boeing's under criminal investigation for the Alaska Airlines flight. You were investigated by, GOD, by DOJ for criminal conspiracy to defraud the FAA. This is all in your tenure. This doesn't sound like a lot of transparency to me. Um, what about uh, safety? Is that a component of your salary? It sure is, Senator. You know, have you seen the reports that the subcontractor that you used to make that door piece that fell out of the sky, that when the FAA went and toured the facility, they found one door seal being lubricated with Dawn liquid dish soap and cleaned with a wet cheesecloth, and another was being checked with a hotel room key card. Does that sound like safety to you? Senator, I, I think our relationship with that particular supplier has been well documented, reviewed by the FAA, and most certainly us. And I'm very intent on acquiring that company so that none of that ever happens. Mm. You know, the FAA also says that Boeing still has not implemented the recommended steps back from 2019 and 2020 after the MAX crashes. You, you, you still have not taken the appropriate safety procedures or implemented what they recommended. I mean, how, if safety is a component of your $33 million compensation package, I mean, how, how can you possibly qualify for any of this? What, what about quality? Is quality part of your compensation package? Senator, I, uh, I meet with the FAA pretty regularly. Uh, they don't hold anything back, and I'm not aware of anything that has been cited with respect to those accidents that we haven't uh, taken action on. Really? Because we've had whistleblowers. You said you'd listen to whistleblower testimony. We've had multiple whistleblowers come before this committee and allege that Boeing is cutting every possible corner on quality and safety, not just in the past, but now. They've alleged that you've eliminated safety inspections, that there are fewer in quality and there are fewer inspectors doing quality inspections out there. They've alleged that when they raised quality issues and concerns, they were reassigned, they were retaliated against, they were physically threatened. That doesn't sound like attention to quality to me. And yet you're getting paid $33 million a year. It's extraordinary. Uh, Se Senator, I... I we have increased our quality inspectors significantly. How much has your stock price increased while you've been at Boeing? It hasn't, and I don't watch it much. Have you done any stock buybacks while you've been at Boeing? Uh, not in my job, no. How about your profits? Have your profits increased at all while you've I haven't been? had any profits, sir. I'm sorry? I have not had any profits. Yeah. You know, I, I think the truth is, Mr. Calhoun, you're not focused on safety. You're not focused on quality. You're not focused on transparency. All of this is in the record. But I think, actually, you're focused on exactly what you were hired to do, which is that you're cutting corners. You are eliminating safety procedures. You are sticking it to your employees. You are cutting back jobs because you're trying to squeeze every piece of profit you can out of this country, you're, this company. You're strip mining it. You're strip mining Boeing. It was one of the greatest American companies ever. It has employed thousands of people in my state. And you are strip mining it for profit, shareholder value, and you're being rewarded for it. You got a huge raise, a huge increase. So it's working out great for you. For the American people, they're in danger. For your workers, they're in peril. For your whistleblowers, they literally fear for their lives. But you're getting compensated like never before. Don't you think maybe your priorities are, are misplaced here? I mean, don't you think maybe it's time to get back to focusing on making quality planes and paying your workers well and taking care of the little guys who got you to where you are? That's not a rhetorical S question. Senator, uh, I don't recognize 
any of the Boeing you described. Really? And I want to assure... You don't recognize I, the Boeing I, I, that has I, airplanes falling out of the sky? That has had two Maxes crash, that has had pieces of doors fall out of the sky, that have had whistleblowers come before they've sat right where you have sat and told us. These are your employees who have told us that when they, these are the engineers, by the way. Are you an engineer? I'm not. Sir. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And they have said that they're not listened to, that they're retaliated against, that they're threatened. That's the reality of Boeing today. That's your company that you have created. Now, I don't recognize it either from the company it used to be decades ago, but under your leadership, that's what Boeing is, and you're being rewarded for it handsomely. Handsomely. Don't you think there's something wrong with that? Why Senator, haven't you resigned? Uh, yeah, Senator, I, uh, I stand by what I said, and I want to assure the great employees in, in your state that um, that is not the way we operate why, the company, why have, and why it never will be. And if you would like my chief engineer to talk about what he sees. No, I want to hear from you because what I hear from you is a lot of this team does that and that team does that. And I listen to the whistleblowers, but I don't meet with them. And I've heard about all this stuff that you Congress have, have meddlesomely asked for because the public wants to see it. Gosh darn them. But you actually haven't supervised any of it. I've heard that. It's a lot of it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. But meanwhile, you're getting paid a heck of a lot of money. It's unbelievable. If anybody's coming out of this deal, good. It's you. Why haven't you resigned? Senator, I'm, I'm sticking this through. I'm proud of having taken the job. I'm proud of our proud of this safety record. record, and I am You're proud very of safety proud record. of our Boeing people. You're proud very. of this safety record? I am proud of every action we have taken. Every action you've yes, taken? Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. There's some news for you. Well, behind you, you can't see it. Behind you, the folks are, are showing pictures of the people who are the victims of your safety record. I think we can all see them. And I think the American public, when they fear to get on their airplanes, they understand your safety record. And frankly, sir, I think it's a travesty that you're still in your job. Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Calhoun, just to come back to you, isn't, isn't a big part of the story not just what's happened at Boeing in the last year or two, but what's happened over the last 20, uh, what the, what the C-suite has done to this company? Well, let me give you an example. This is from The Atlantic magazine uh, last month. For nearly 40 years, the company, Boeing, built the 737 fuselage itself in the same plant that turned out its B-29 and B-52 bombers. In 2005, it sold this facility to a private investment firm, offloading, Boeing called it. The tail, the landing gear, the flight controls, and other essentials were outsourced to factories around the world, owned by others, and then just shipped to Boeing for final assembly. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to with consent, uh, you have this uh, article, Boeing of the Dark Age of American Manufacturing Industry. Without objection. You now have 600, at least 600 direct suppliers worldwide. Who knows how many subcontra subcontractors? You've got 35 direct suppliers in China alone. I mean, hasn't this really been the hollowing out of Boeing? Uh, Senator Hawley, I, uh, I think the decision that we have made with respect to Spirit Arrow and our determination to bring it back into the Boeing fold is, is definitely a vote in favor of vertical integration. Um, That's I one. Can't, I can't comment on all the ones of the past. Um, and we have had not had the number of issues uh, and those that we are currently dealing with with respect to uh, our fuselage. Um, so but wait, but, but I can't you, rewrite history, minute, but, minute, I, but I can minute, take action forward. You're in charge forward. of the you're in charge of the company. I'm just asking you. You're in charge of a company. You're getting paid 33 million dollars a year. You're in charge of a company that has systematically over decades now shipped out its jobs, shipped out its production. Over the last decade, while you've either been in charge of CEO or on the board, stock prices have rose 600 percent at Boeing. You've in fact done $59 billion in returning cash to shareholders, 20 billion of that in dividends, 39 billion of that in stock buybacks. Some people are doing great here. I'm just wondering, given the fact that your airplanes are falling out of the sky, do you think that any of that has to do with the fact that you really don't make that much anymore in this country or in-house? I mean, hasn't it been a mistake to hollow out the company and ship your production and your manufacturing and your know-how to other places around the world instead of Doing it yourself, the American engineers, American workers? 
Uh, Senator Ali, I, I, I think I read an annual report going all the way back to the introduction of the 747, which highlighted the fact that 65% of that airplane would be sourced by US manufacturers here and there. And the other thing I do know that since 2015, again, I don't have all that history, but before that, um, we have actually uh, brought more work to the US than we have taken out of the US. And at an absolute level, our work in the US is in the high 80%. And that is unlike any other industry I have ever worked in. These are your suppliers, you're saying. These yes. are your, your subcontractors, yes. right? The, the ones who are using Dawn dish soap to test their doors and cheesecloth to test the plugs, right? Those. Your CFO, Brian West, recently went on the record and said that Boeing probably got a little too far ahead of itself on the topic of outsourcing. You agree with that? He was speaking directly to our decision to go after Spirit. So he's, he was right? He was speaking directly to our decision to vertically integrate Spirit. So he, he was right. You, you, you got too far ahead of yourself on outsourcing for all of these years. Is Boeing going to change course on this? We, we are most certainly changing course on Spirit. You've got uh, 32,000 machinists, these are American workers who work for you. These are Boeing employees in the Pacific Northwest. You're in contract negotiations with them right now. 32,000, that's a lot of them. The last time that they got a contract was 16 years ago. Do you remember the terms of that contract? I don't. It was, a, it was a very long contract. Yeah, well, they got 1% uh, wage increases over eight years. 1% over eight years. You got a 45% increase just last year, and you're making $33 million. You think maybe these folks deserve a, a raise? Oh, they will definitely get a raise. Good, good. I hope it's a substantial one. And I hope that maybe this will be an opportunity for Boeing, under new leadership, to reverse course and actually start making things again, start making things in this country again, and start paying its people well. I've listened to your testimony, and you know, it seems like the gist of it seems to be that if you could just get your employees to comply, you know, follow the rules, follow your, your management techniques, et cetera, things would be better. I don't think the problem's with the employees. Oh, it's Actually, not. It is no, not. I, I, I think agree. the problem's with you. You. It's the C-suite. It's the management. It's what you've done to this company. That's where the problem is. The problem's at the top. Your engineers, they're probably the best in the world. Your machinists, they're outstanding. You're the problem. And I just hope to God that you don't destroy this company before it can be saved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.